Hey everyone, this is Devin Adams. I'm a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, and I record these videos for the people who take my classes. And yeah, I got a whole new series that I'm going to be working on in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I, I had a request, and I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I'm up for the challenge. So we're going to look into the advanced high availability options on the FortiGate. So in my past videos, we've done the traditional um, HA failover, all right? And I'll explain that in just a moment here, but there's a limitation to the HA cluster, and that is you can only direct traffic to one Forti gate at a time. Well, with this virtual clustering that you can accomplish using VDOMs, there is a way that you can distribute traffic to two Forti gates instead of just one to increase throughputs. It's called uh, it's called the uh, virtual clustering. Uh, um, configuration and yeah that's that's really our goal here now um, I'm starting really simple because I've actually never done it I've, I've taught it I've read about it I've never seen it in practice okay and then the reason why I'm, I'm making this a whole new playlist is because I'm gonna just add the high availability in as much as I can over the next couple of weeks to just see how far I can take it so um, you know anyways <laughs> that's that's the challenge so guys uh, so that's what we're gonna do here right after this introduction I'm also gonna just review the HA cluster information uh, real briefly and why we're gonna use this virtual clustering uh, protocol all right and then in this video specifically we're gonna build the topology so we're just gonna bring in the machines to do the um, to do the demo here. So now a lot of you have asked me for like configuration files and the truth is uh, because of GNS3 and the way that we use the free VMs, we, we, as in there's like multiple of me, I don't keep these any longer than the 15 days they're alive. So after that's done, they're gone forever. So also I don't really have a feasible way of, of uh, hosting them or supporting them because um, you know, I don't do this YouTube channel for any kind of profit or anything like that. It's just a supplement to my course materials that I do for my my live classes. So um, that's why also, though, I build them from scratch. So for those that are not interested in seeing me configure stuff in GNS3, uh, you can skip right to like number video three here uh, once it gets recorded. So, cause everything leading up to there just has to do with building the topology itself, okay? And that's why I'm also separating the topology with the VDOMs, cause I've never really done a video on VDOMs, all right? And, uh, yeah, so we're going to enable and configure virtual domains, which is a way to logically partition the FortiGates. And yeah, then after that, we should have enough to actually kick in the HA. And I'm not going to partitioning. I am not going to um, bring in the second FortiGate until this step. All right, so we're going to see all the HA stuff in, in practice. We're going to look at the um, partitioning. And then... In the very last video, I might combine it here. I'm not too sure for the sake of time. Uh, we're going to kill a device and, and see if it works. But more importantly is that we're going to use Wireshark and make sure that it is truly using both FortiGates in the primary uh, configuration flow so we get more throughput. So, whew, that was a mouthful. Anyways, guys, um, once again, I'm not, a, I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't record these without with a script or anything like that. I, I literally just rolled them off of my my uh, shoulder here. So I just, I apologize first and foremost. Also, um, all the documentation, graphics that uh, I'm gonna be using here did come from the Fortinet 40 OS handbook and also their cookbook. So I'm going to leave those in the video description so you guys can do it yourselves. Now I'm using the FortiGate 6.2, but I did not like their documentation. So I'm actually using 6.0. I hope that doesn't screw anything up. It just might, I don't know. So anyways, but uh, yeah. So before we start building these machines though, uh, just a real fresh reminder of what we're talking about here. So in HA mode, we have two identical FortiGates that are participating in high availability. Uh, because it uses a layer two technology, everything gets directed to the primary first and foremost always. And then if we are in an active active situation, qualifying traffic can be offloaded to the secondary FortiGates, but all we really get there, right, is um, 
uh, shared resources or increase in resources, not necessarily in throughput, okay? So even though we have a completely second device here, and uh, yeah, it's just essentially sending heartbeat links here and also session information for seamless failover. So if one dies, the primary dies, it can go ahead and take its place with little packet loss, all right? So um, let me just review how it actually does the uh, the election process and things like that when it fails over. So once the election process happens, okay, uh, a FortiGate is going to be considered the primary. Now the primary is going to get a virtual MAC address based off of that election process. And that virtual MAC address is actually what points all of the layer two traffic to the primary unit. So if this guy stops talking, all right, the other members will go ahead and negotiate who's going to be the next primary and then adopts the identical MAC address that the primary used to have. All right, uh, it does this by either sending a gratuitous ARP to the switch, or if you have any problems with that gratuitous ARP, there is an option to simulate a failed um, or a downed interface. So we'll flush the ARP table on the switch. But now a new device has that MAC address. So it will start getting traffic from the other devices that think that it's the primary. So IP addresses are actually not involved. It all has to do with layer two. And that's fine, guys, except for the fact that how the heck do we utilize the other devices for throughput? Well, you really can't. <laughs> so the only way to do it, and Fortinet does have a solution for this, and it's called the virtual clustering demo. And that's where we take a single FortiGate and we carve it up in VDOMs or virtual domains and we actually make one a primary over here, a backup over here, a primary over here, and then the opposite over here, backup, primary, backup. So what happens is one VDOM is directing all the traffic to one primary, the other VDOMs are pointing it to another primary. All right, and if there's a failover, that primary unit just goes ahead and takes over everything until the secondary is recovered. So, um, so the topology guide that I'm actually going to be using is out of the cookbook, and this is their graphic out of it. Okay. All right. So. As you can see here, we have the primary FortiGates, but because we are going to be using VDOMs, all right, we're going to point engineering traffic actually to the WAN to LAN 2 connection here, all right? So traffic should be able to go to this guy if you are in the engineering department as the primary, and then everything else using the actual primary for their traffic. So that way we get two throughputs. And like I said, guys, I've never done this before. I've been dying to try it. And you know what? I thought that was a little bit lame just to have two. We're actually going to do four VDOMs. So we're going to do the roots, then we're going to have customers. And I am keeping it kind of simple for this time and leaving v v links out of it. I'm going to record another set of videos uh, that includes the virtual links because, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure how that works when traffic has to pass between VDOMs when half of the traffic's over here and half of the traffic's over here. I'm dying to find out just like you guys. So, I mean, that's pretty much going to be our goal. So why don't we go ahead and build the topology and then I'll turn on the machines, right? And then we'll go ahead and end the video from there and I'll let all the devices post. And then in the next video, we'll start configuring everything, including the VDOMs. So, because it's already going on a little bit too long. So but let's delete that out of here and let's actually build this. So if you guys go into my other videos, um, we've set up GNS3 before in the past, all right? And we're going to begin at the very top, and that's going to be our NAT cloud. So this NAT cloud is going to act as a connection out to the real internet, all right? So here we go. And in my videos, I usually label this as internet, as creative as that is, all right? And then my my actual um, my actual device of choice has been lately just because of its rich options is I'm going to use a PF Sense as my as my WAN connection. So this is going to kind of simulate the WAN environment. All right. So I'm going to just call this WAN, and I like to actually change the icons so they look a little bit more like what we're trying to do here. 
All right. And this is going to be our make-believe internet that we control in our environment. So it's going to get DHCP from my actual NIC to this guy here. All right. And then we're going to use the 10200 IP addresses as our make-believe WAN IP addresses. All right. So that way our other FortiGates can have static connections. Okay. And then we're going to need a FortiGate. And remember, we're not going to introduce the second FortiGate until the VDOMs are configured. So let me pop this bad boy out. All right. Let me find my, my FortiGate 6.2. And this is using the free VMs to get off of the support contract. And I'm actually going to call this FortiGate A as the host name. So I'm really big on using A and B instead of primary and secondary or primary or backup because if you're physically labeling these devices in the data center, you know, it just makes more sense to use an A, B instead of a primary because it really shouldn't matter who's the primary. Anyways, and then from there, this is where things are going to get a little bit difference all right because we're going to make it as if we are using our vdoms for individual customers that are not connected to each other in any possible way and that's one of the deployment options that you have when you're using vdoms like if we're like a managed service provider and we're just providing interfaces on our four gates right so um and like I said, I'm going to record a whole other set of videos here to make a mesh VDOM configuration. But like I, like I said, I want to keep this as simple as possible to begin with. So we're going to need some uh, switched interfaces down here. All right. So um, because, well, essentially, guys, we're going to be doing high availability. So it needs to plug into the same broadcast domain. So let's go ahead and get some switches. And I'm just going to use GNS3's built-in uh switch appliance here all right here we go and i'm actually just going to duplicate and then i'm going to duplicate oops <laughs> i grabbed the wan cloud by accident there we go come on get off of me here we are what a mess all right so there should be four switches there. So this is going to be our four WAN connections, right? So each customer is going to be responsible for their own WAN connection. And then we're going to have one for the root or management. And then check this out. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's a lot of bloody switches. That's going to be the LAN side of things. And you know what? We can actually just pluck these out as we need them. So I'm just going to say uh, root uh, WAN, OK? And I'll put in the IP addresses down here in just a second. So, and then I'll say customer A WAN. And I could actually probably just copy that. Then I'll say customer B WAN, right? And then customer C WAN. So they're gonna have their own, they're gonna have their own internet connection each. Okay? We're just providing the firewall itself. All right. And then from there, we can go ahead and connect each one of these bad boys into what's gonna be our PF sense box. All right. And like I said, this is going to be a heck of a, a video series too, guys. So just to let you know, I know the videos are going to be running a little bit long, but hopefully, you know, it's enough for you to be able to to duplicate it in your own GNS3. That's really my my goal here. So, all right. Then I guess we can just bloop. And I'll clean more stuff up off of the camera. So, all right. Excellent. Now we need to connect them to the FortiGate. So we're just going to say, hey, uh, port one is going to belong to the root. Then port two is going to be customer A's. Port three is going to be customer B's. And port four is going to be customer C's. Good 
times. All right, nice. Okay, now we actually need the <laughs> the land part of things. I know, right? Crazy. Here we go. So here I'm gonna say land. All right. And then over here, customer B. And then over here, it's probably the most time consuming part of the whole entire lab. But like I said, I do this so you guys can, can uh, do it yourselves. So there we go. All right. And then this is going to be our root. And when I say root, guys, I mean like the management side. So if we were doing this as a MSSP, a managed service provider, security service provider, we would need a network too, right? So there we go. There we go. Here we go. And now that I think of it, I should probably branch off and actually do like a quick VDOM playlist just because it'd be such a good opportunity. Anyways, that was my squirrel moment. All right, let's go ahead and label these now. All right, so port five respectively, port six, port seven, and then port eight, which leaves us two more ports for our heartbeat links. Yeah, craziness. All right. Like I said, I'll, I'll clean this up more off of the camera. Uh, very last thing is that obviously we're going to need um, we're going to need an appliance for our, our GUI. So here I'm going to use the web term. Um, it's just a little tiny Linux box. It's enough to, to have a to have a Linux build in it. So um, good times there. So here we're just going to say uh, root PC. And this one is going to be special. So this one, we're going to configure a static IP address. And then the rest of them, we're just going to do DHCP to make it easy. So here we're going to say uh, configure. And of course, give it a new symbol. So it graphically looks a little better here. Uh, we'll do that actually using the menu. That'd be easier. Here we go. But here we're going to say, hey, it's going to be a static route. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. I'm just taking out the hashes. Here we go. And then we got to pick a scheme here. So I'm just going to say 1010101 .10 .10 is going to be our management. 10101254 will be the FortiGate once we get it configured. And then we'll just use 8888 for our for our uh, DNS. All right. So there we go. We'll hit save. We'll hit OK. And then we'll change the symbol like here. So it looks like a PC. OK. And then we'll plug that right into the root switch. All right. And then we'll do it all over again, but now with customer A. So here we go. OK. And then we'll say um, customer A, PC. And then we'll change the symbol. We'll make these look like desktops just for fun. All right. And then we come here to configure our network settings. And now I'm going to leave these all hashed out. But I am going to turn on DHCP. All right. All right. And then check this out. We could actually just duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Do I have too many? <laughs> I do have too many. Get out of here, bud. I don't need you. Here we go. And we'll call this B. All right. And then we'll call this C. Excellent. Good stuff. And then we'll we'll plug her in.
All right. Yeah, got to clean that up. I'll figure out some way to lay out the topology here <laughs> once I'm off camera. So, but guys, uh, that should be it for right now. So, um, I guess what we do after that is we get the PF sense up and going. So we'll hit start on that. Okay. And then also, um, it wouldn't hurt to get the, the FortiGate starting too. All right. And then also the PC here. Okay. So good stuff there. And then the, the PF sense does take a little bit to start up and running and all that good stuff. Um, that's not a big deal here. So let's go ahead and uh, hit number one. Oh, nope, it's still booting. So, and I'm actually going to pause it right there. And uh, I I just realized we might as well just configure the, the PF Sense box. And uh, also the FortiGate just for some access. And then I'll stop the video. But I'm going to pause it right here until this finishes posting until it's actually ready. So. All right, there we go. And this is actually a, an ISO that's going to go ahead and install and uh, put it on the hard drive. So let's go ahead and accept. We'll install it. All right, we're just kind of hitting enter all the way through. And then it's going to go ahead and format that blank hard disk and then actually drop it. So there you guys go. Um, once again, I'm going to pause, just showing you what's going to happen every step here. So, all right, we now have. Uh, our installation is finished. Do you want to make any last configurations? We'll say no. All right, we'll reboot. And then, yeah, I'm going to pause it one last time and just wait until I get the menu. So uh, let me increase the size here. So the first thing we're going to do here is assign the interfaces. So let's hit, um, let's hit the one. All right. So as you can see, we have a whole bunch of interfaces and then the EM2 and 3 are down, so we need those. We are not going to do VLANs. All right. So enter the WAN interface name. Okay. So it's going to be EM0. All right. Enter the LAN interface name. That's going to be EM1. Optional one is going to be EM2. And then EM3. Nothing. All right. There we go. So we're gonna say yes. And those should actually bring those other interfaces up. So, all right. Just gotta wait for it. <laughs> It'll just take a second. All right, there we go. And as you can see, they're now up, but uh, you know, obviously, there's no IP addresses on them, and that LAN has the wrong IP address. It should be 10200. So that's going to be our next step. Is number two is the IP addresses. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll hit two. All right. So which one do we wish to configure first? We're going to say two. All right. Enter the new LAN IP address. So it's going to be 10200. 1.254. So this is going to be the default gateway for the root VDOM. All right. And we will use a slash 24. Why? Why not? All right. Here we go. And for WAN, enter the new upstream. For LAN, hit nothing. We're not doing IP6. Do you want DHCP? Not on this, not on this guy. So we'll say no. Um, sure. If we ever need to get to the if we ever need to get to the web interface for PFSense, there you guys go. So, okay, now we're going to do it for our customer A. So that's going to be uh, number two, assign IP addresses. And then it's going to be three. And it's going to be 10, oops, 10.200.2.254. 10 with a slash 24. All right. Nope. Nope. DHCP. Nope. Not on this bad boy. So that's going to be the default gateway for our customer A. Okay. And then, oh, looks like we're missing an interface, by the way. Oh, snap. All right. That's fine. I'll fix that in just a second. So let's go ahead and put on the IP address for customer B. There we go. So we'll say four. And it's going to be 10.200 dot three dot two five four with the 24 
And then, nope, it's LAN. Nope, we don't need IP6. Nope, we don't need DHCP. We're good there. And yeah, I, I missed one interface. Womp, womp, womp. So here we go. <laughs> I miscounted the WAN interface. So we're going to have to unfortunately do that one all over again. So, all right, no VLANs. So our WAN interface is going to be EM0, EM1, EM2, EM3. Now we're going to do EM4. And we're not going to use EM. Five. All right, there we go. And then writing the configuration and the interface is coming up. Just take a second. All right, so waiting to write the routing. Route is unreachable. Oh, that's cute. Anyways, all right, we'll give it a second to reload. All right, there we go. Now let's just put on that IP address for EM4. So, uh, which is going to be option two. Oops, got to click in there. Option two, be option five, 10.200.4.254, which will be the default gateway for customer eight. All right, it's a LAN address, no IP6. No, we're not using DHCP. All right, perfect. Okay, guys, so that should take care of our WAN router. So that way we can simulate four different internet connections out to the world. All right, and then because PFSense is using natting, um, we can actually get out to the real internet too, which is gonna be important for testing and also for licensing reasons and all that good stuff. So sure, there we go, we are set. Okay, the very last thing we're gonna do is just get access to this bad boy right here and then we'll end the video and then we'll do the rest when we enable VDOM. So let's go ahead and open up this guy. Okay, and I will increase the size so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. All right. There we go. And remember, a fresh forward to get it out of the box is admin no password. And then we're going to do a configure system interface, and it's going to be editing port 1. No, it's not. What port number is that on? If you just hover right above it. I think we did five, didn't we? Yep, it's port five to root. All right, so we're gonna have to do edit port five. And then here we're going to set IP to 10.10.1.254. So that is going to be the IP address of our root subnet here. All right, slash 24. And a set allow access, we're gonna do 10. Oh, not, not, not IP addresses. Ping, THHP, THHPS, SSH, and Telnet. And by the way, we're only doing that because we're using the free VMs and then the test environments. All right, so that way we don't have to worry about cert errors and stuff like that. Um, there we go. And guys, that should be enough to at least get to the GUI so we can start doing some configuration here. All right, so let's test it out. So if we go to 10.10.1.254, bada boom, bada bing, there's the FortiGate, admin no password. We'll go ahead and change it so it doesn't prompt us. I'm just using something silly like password because we're in the test environment. And now we can start doing our VDOM configuration. So in the next... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> in the next video, uh, like I said, guys, so there we go. We now have enough to at least get started. So I'm going to clean up this off camera, all right, So and then label these subnets here. So, But it's basically going to be 10.10.1, 10.10.2, 10.10.3, 10.10.4 to kind of keep with the, the, the IP scheme here, all right? And uh, so in the next video, we'll enable and configure VDOMs. And I won't do a separate series uh, for VDOMs. I'll do that down the road sometime. Um, but yeah, we're going to configure each one of these as if they were an independent FortiGate. Okay. And then once they're working, in theory, we should be able just to kick on the HA and use VDOM partitioning. All right. To essentially have a cluster instead of a, a, uh, instead of just having all the traffic going to FortiGate A, we're going to have it also go to FortiGate B. And our last video, once we get that all working, is to do some Wireshark to confirm the virtual MAC addresses are passing traffic out 
We'll even test a failover to make sure they can all get out. And then that will be the end of it. So guys, like always, my videos always go too long. I apologize. Like I saying, guys, if you just want the HA stuff, uh, it might take me a couple of days to record everything. I can just record it while I can. Um, you know, you could probably skip right to video three. So um, other than that, I'll just see you guys back shortly. And hopefully I get to that other video here soon. And I'll see you guys on the beach. So see you soon.